Ow. <laughs> Do you know what day it is today? Well, I'll tell you, it's not my birthday. That's right. And even though it's not my birthday, I still think we should celebrate. So... Ta -da! <laughs> Look at this fantastic not my birthday cake. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, though, it gives me a great idea. Let's make something. Make a delicious looking cake that's totally fake. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> Two big pink sponges and some strips of tissue paper. Some gloopy PVA glue. Some paints and a big brush. A ruler and a pen. Oh, now to make a fantastic fake cake like this tasty one here, we need to start off with a piece of pink sponge like this. And using a pen and a ruler, we're going to draw a tall triangle that looks a bit like a piece of cheese. Now we're going to cut this triangle out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. Hey, oh. Now, this is a little bit fiddly, so you might want to ask an adult to help you. Now, draw around this sponge triangle onto another piece of sponge. Now we can cut this shape out as well, very carefully. Next, we're going to make the sticky, gooey, fake cake filling. Paint on some red paint, first of all, to one of the sponge triangles. Now, we're just going to paint it along this edge here, like this. Now, don't worry if the paint dribbles a bit. It all adds to the effect. Now, do the same on the opposite edge. There, that's all the red done on that triangle. Then, on the other triangle, we're going to use a different colour. How about white paint for the creamy filling? Again, paint along two edges of your triangle, like this. Once both sponges are painted, brush on some gloopy glue to the top of the jammy triangle and stick on the creamy triangle so that the white edge meets the red edge like a sandwich. And there we have a cake. It's taking shape, isn't it? But now we need to make some icing. And for that, we need to take a piece of tissue paper and we're just going to scrunch and bunch it up. There we are, very loosely. And then we're going to take this side and just fold it into the middle like that. And then take this side and fold it into the middle as well. So it's all bunched together nicely. This is going to be the icing at the back of our cake. So let's bring our cake back in. Add on some gloopy glue here at the back. Then we can pick up our icing and place it on. There we go, that's the icing at the back. But how about some icing in the middle here? It's a circle shape. Now, to make that, we need another piece of tissue paper. I'm going to scrunch and bunch it up again, this time a little bit more tightly. And then I'm going to start twirling it around in a circle shape. Round and round it goes. It doesn't have to be neat. There, a tissue paper circle. Add another dollop of gloopy glue and stick it on. Once your sponge is dry, it's time to use some more paint. But this time, it's to create the delicious icing on the back of the cake and on the top. Now, you can choose whatever colour icing you like, but I think we should do a nice white icing. So let's get a clean brush and let's get some gloopy paint. Now, it looks really good if your paint is nice and thick and gloopy like this. And when it's dry, doesn't it look fantastic? But there's one thing missing. It's the cherry on the top. Now, to make that, we need a square of red tissue paper like this. And we're going to scrunch it up into a ball. There we go. 
Now let's brush on some gloopy glue on top of our circle of icing, and then we can stick it on. <laughs> there we go. It's the cherry on top of the cake. Wow, look at it, a fake cake that's easy to make. And why not try some other spongy delights? Ooh. Why not try a slice of chocolate cake with pink icing and shiny beads? Or you could try making a whole cake using two large round sponges like this. Yes, all those fake cakes look fantastic. The only thing you can't do, of course, is eat them. <sighs> Wouldn't it be great to be a king? I, the king, by royal command, order everyone in the world to start making brilliant things. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Ah, if only. I tell you what, though, it's given me an idea. Do you want to be a king or queen? Well, now's your chance to make your very own crown. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the Doodle Drawer. <laughs> a long piece of card. <laughs> some sticky stuff. <laughs> some tin foil. Some cotton wool. And some sticky jewels or coloured paper. Whoa! Now, to make your crown like this one here, first check your long piece of card is long enough to go all the way around your head with a little bit extra to spare. Eh, that seems about right. Perfect. Now, draw triangle shapes all the way along the top of your card. Now these will be the points of the crown. Then take some scissors and cut it out. But be careful because scissors are sharp. If you find this hard, ask an adult to help you. Now, cover the crown shape in glue. And now cover it with a piece of tin foil. Yeah. Bend the foil around the shape of the crown like this. Now, don't worry if there are bits of card showing, because you can always fill those in with other bits of foil. In fact, you could make your whole crown this way. <laughs> now, turn it over. There! Doesn't it look great? Let's put glue all along the base of our crown. and stick cotton wool along the edge. Now we're ready to stick on some jewels or some cut-out paper shapes. Hmm, very colourful, but I think for now, let's just stick to jewels. Now for the next job. You might need an adult to help you with this bit. To get a perfect fit, wrap your crown around your head like this, then hold it in position carefully. There, get some sticky tape and stick it together. There. Great! Now you're ready to rule! I am the king of all makes. 
By royal command, I order you to start making things. <laughs> this fantastic starfish picture is made out of kitchen roll. It's really simple to make, but looks so good you'll be able to frame it. You'll need kitchen roll, some watered down poster paint, glue, felt tip pens, and some paint brushes. First, you'll need to water down your paint. It's a good idea to put some old paper or newspaper down, as this can get a bit messy. Now, draw a simple picture of a starfish onto the kitchen roll with a felt tip pen. Then, dip a paintbrush into watered down paint and start to paint over your picture. The more watery paint you put on, the more the lines in your picture will spread. Do as much or as little as you want. When you're happy with your picture, leave it to dry. And why not make some seaweed? Draw your seaweed onto another piece of kitchen roll and brush more watery paint over it and leave that to dry. Then bring back your dry starfish and draw around the outline of it with a felt tip pen. And maybe draw a face. These pictures look great like this, but if you want you can cut them out. And then stick your cut out shapes onto another piece of paper. What a fantastic effect! Why don't you have some fun with Kitchen Roll? And how about making a seahorse? What a great way of making a really clever picture! Now all that's left to do is... Frame it! That was amazing! Now have a look at this! It gets messy doing all this art! But one of the best things about making things is that you can often turn one thing into another. You can turn some pencil shavings into a lovely picture. You can turn an egg box into a dog. But what do you think we could turn this into? A useful but quite boring looking cleaning up sponge. Hmm. This gives me an idea. Let's make it! Sponge toast and tissue paper baked beans. A work of art that's good enough to eat. As well as our sponge, we'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Some tissue paper. A plastic knife and fork. Some sticky white PVA glue. Some paint. Some plastic sheep. No, not really, I'm just messing around. We don't need these. And a paper plate. Whoa! Now to make your sponge toast and tissue paper baked beans like this, first take your scissors and trim your sponge so it's rounded at one end and so it looks a bit more like a slice of toast. Be careful though because scissors are sharp. Then get some white paint and mix it with some brown paint to make a light brown toast colour. There. Now brush your paint mixture all over your sponge.
Now paint brown around the edges for a crust effect. It looks just like a piece of toast. Let's stick it on our plate. Now, whilst that dries, get some orange tissue paper, or you could use white tissue paper and colour it in orange, and roll lots and lots of small, tiny tissue paper balls very tightly. These will be our baked beans. Yummy. There's one. And there. It's two. Here's a whole plate full. Now, let's stick some beans on our toast and plate. Now mix some white sticky PVA glue with some orange paint. This makes the baked bean sauce, which we can pour all over our beans. There. Now for a finishing touch, a plastic fork and a plastic knife. Stick everything down and leave it to dry. All finished. Now, if you like the idea of turning this into something different, have a look at some of the other ideas you could make. Try making sponge sandwiches with tissue paper lettuce, cardboard tomato, and foam ham and cheese. Mmm! Or how about sponge fish fingers, sponge chips, tissue paper peas, and ketchup made from a blob of red paint. So the next time you see a boring old sponge, you'll know you can turn it into something far more interesting. Wow! Look at that! This is great, because I was feeling a bit hungry, actually. And it... Now, take a look at this. This space picture is out of this world. It's easy to do and looks so good that you'll be able to frame it. You'll need dark coloured paper, shiny paper, tin foil, buttons, sticky stars, a see-through plastic lid, a glue stick and a photo of yourself. Take a sheet of dark coloured paper. To make your astronaut, tear some tin foil and fold it into four long rectangles. These will be the arms and legs. Make sure the legs are a little bit longer than the arms. Fold a square like this for the body and glue them down together. Next, tear out some hands and feet from shiny paper and glue those down as well. Cut out a rectangle shape with rounded edges. This will be part of the space helmet. Then stick this on top of the body. Now for the fun bit. Take a photo of yourself and carefully cut your head out. Then stick it on top of the body. Every good astronaut needs a trusty space helmet. For this, glue a plastic lid on top of your photo. And because it's see-through, you can still see your face. To finish off the spacesuit, add a patch of paper for a chest plate and some buttons. Then roll some thin, wiry pieces of tin foil. These look good as tubes on the spacesuit. Bend them round between the body and the helmet and stick them down. To finish off the picture, add sticky stars and planets. Just cut some circle shapes out of coloured shiny paper and stick them on. There, 
all done. It's an out-of-this-world astronaut in space. Why don't you try blasting off into space too? What a fantastic picture! Now all that's left to do is... Frame it! Isn't it effective? And now... Oh, rubbish! 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 Oh, I've been trying to draw a picture of an alien, but I just can't get his face right! This is rubbish! Oh, hang on! I've got a rubbish idea! Actually, it's not a rubbish idea, it's a great idea about rubbish. Let's make something! A fantastic alien who starts off life as a load of old rubbish! Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers! Some old scrap paper or newspaper. Some tin foil. Some sticky tape. And some paint. Whoa! Now, to make your very own alien, like this one here, first scrunch up two paper balls like this. There. Now make sure one of your shapes is bigger than the other, like this one here. Now this one is going to be the body, and this smaller one is going to be the head. Now we can cover both shapes in sticky tape and stick them together. Now cover the head and body in foil, scrunching it around him. Now for arms and legs. And for this, we need to roll two thin strips of foil like this. And now two arms, a little bit shorter, like this. And then stick all of your alien bits together. Now you need to paint your alien a really good alien colour. You can choose any colour you like, but I think I'll do him green. You can paint his eyes another colour, like this, to give him a really great alien look. Now leave him to dry. Looking good, Mr Alien. It's time for you to go home! Mm, oh, I know. It's always good to go before a long journey. Um, the bathroom's upstairs, second on your left. All right, nice to meet you. Bye! Oh, where did he go? Oh, oh, it's Minute Maid time! Here's what we're going to make today. Let's turn a piece of kitchen roll into a great piece of art. Look at it, it's beautiful. Now to make this, you'll need a piece of kitchen roll and some bowls of food colouring. I've got three different colours here. Now you can get some food colouring from a supermarket. Do you think it's possible to make this great piece of art in just a minute? You must be joking. I'm not joking. Let's find out. I'll have to be very quick, but don't worry. I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's 
Make it in a minute! Right, let's get our kitchen roll and fold it in half. Then fold it in half again. And then let's move this corner up to that corner to make a triangle. We can do that again to make a smaller triangle. Now, here comes the fun part. We dip one corner into the green, like that, just shake off the rest, and then dip this other corner into the red. Oh, nice. And then last but not least, let's dip the blue there. There we go. And now if we open it up very carefully, here it comes. Oh, very nice indeed. Look, it's a great work of art. Beautiful. Stop the clock. Thanks, Toki, and with time to spare too. Now I'm gonna leave this one to dry. This is such a great idea, you can try any colors you want. There's a blue, green, and yellow one. And this one's a different pattern with pink and orange. Look, I've gone kitchen roll bonkers. And all of these were made in a minute. Why don't you give it a go? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Fold a piece of kitchen roll in half and then half again. Then fold it into a triangle and then fold it again into a smaller triangle. Dip each corner into a different coloured food colouring. Unfold it and leave your kitchen roll art to dry. Try making it in a minute. Look at this. Grandma Maker has sent me some stuff for the doodle drawers that she had in her attic. <laughs> Let's see what's in here. Oh, yes. Look at that. It's a photo of us on holiday at the seaside. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Oh, what else is in here? Right, I better just put all this away very carefully. Right. Oh. Sorry about that. I slipped on this bubble wrap. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, bubble wrap. This gives me a great idea. Let's try something. Try making this fantastic octopus picture using a paper plate and bubble wrap. Let's make it, as well as some bubble wrap. We'll need some other things from the doodle drawers. A coloured paper plate. Some yellow and white paper. A garden gnome. No, we don't need him. Sorry, Norman. <laughs> Some gloopy PVA glue and a glue stick. A black pen and some sticky tapes. And a paintbrush and some red paint. Whoa! Now, to make a bubble wrap octopus like this one here, we need to draw two circles that are the same size onto some white paper. Now, to help you, it's a good idea to draw around something, like a sticky tape roll. Now, these are going to be the octopus's eyes, so let's add pupils with a black pen. Great! Now we need to get our yellow paper and draw some circles for the octopus's spots. Ooh. Now cut all of these circles out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, careful! <laughs> Next, take a coloured paper plate, like this red one, and stick your eyes and spots on. So now we've got eyes, spots, and even a little mouth that I've added with a black pen. All that's missing now are the octopus's tentacles. And of course, for the tentacles, we need the bubble wrap. But first, we need to make a painty mixture. And that's going to be half 
gloopy glue and half poster paint. I'm going to use red paint to match my paper plate. Yeah, that looks about right. Now let's give it a mix with a paintbrush. And then paint this painty mixture over our bubble wrap. Now it's a good idea to paint on the bubbly side. And when it's dry, like this, you can carefully cut it out into eight wiggly sausage shapes. These are going to be the octopus's tentacles. Now you can attach them to the back of your paper plate with some sticky tape. But make sure the tentacles are bubbly side down. There! Let's have a look. Fantastic! Now all that's left to do is to stick our octopus onto a piece of coloured card. But you don't have to make an octopus. Oh no, you can make anything you like. How about an elephant? It's got bubbly ears and a rolled up bubbly trunk. Or how about this handsome fellow with fantastic bubbly hair? Hey, he's not a bad looking chap, that one, is he? He's got fantastic bubble wrap eyebrows. Brilliant! <laughs> what the? All right, all right, Mr. Elephant. The elephant picture's really good, too. <laughs> it's a lovely day outside. Lovely. The birds are singing in the sky. Oh, oh, yuck! You dirty bird! Oh. 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 That gives me an idea, though. Let's try something. The perfect boredom buster for a sunny day. Splat pictures. Let's make it! It's time to visit the doodle drawers to get what we need. <laughs> some coloured paper, some bits of old sponge, some brightly coloured poster paints, some plastic cups, and some water. Whoa! Now, to make your splat picture, like this one here, it's a good idea to wear an old T-shirt or an apron. Oh, and it's best to do this outside because it can get a little bit messy. Oh, but I think I'll show you in here. First, put a different colour paint in each cup. Add a little water to make the paint runny. And now, give it a quick mix. Now, drop your sponges into the painty cups. This is the messy bit. Remove your painty sponges and place them on the paper. Now here's the fun part. We need something to splat with. We're off to the doodle drawers. A wooden spoon. And a spatula. Ready, steady, splat! This is great! Let's do a big one! Ready, steady, splat! I love a good splat picture! It's minute make time! 
here's what we're going to make today. An easy tambourine. <laughs> and to make one of these, you will need an empty sweet tube, a glue stick, three pieces of pipe cleaner, a strip of card, and three pet balls that you can get from a pet shop. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Oh, really, Toki? Well, I think I can do it, although I will have to be very quick. Don't worry, though, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Great! Let's make it in a minute! OK, let's get our three pet balls and our three pieces of pipe cleaner and we're going to feed the pieces of pipe cleaner through the balls like that. There's one. And let's do another one. There it goes through. And then the last piece of pipe cleaner goes through this pet ball. Now let's get our strip of card and if we lay it out, we're going to put one at the top here first. Now I'm going to wrap the pieces of pipe cleaner around there we go, like that, so it's in place. Then I'm going to put one in the middle. There we are, wrapping that round again so it's nice and tight. It's in position. And last but not least, I'm going to put one at the bottom. Faster, faster. I'm going as quick as I can, Toki. Right, let's make sure they're all in position. I think they are. Yes. Right, let's get our sweet tube and put some glue on both ends. That's that end and that end there. Oh, I better hurry up. And if we stick our strip there, and there, we can make some music with our tambourine! Only just... Not bad, eh? And if you've got more than a minute, you could decorate the handle by painting it. Nice! You could even add some stickers to decorate it. Ooh! Or why not try using a bigger sweet tube and lots more balls? Hey! An easy tambourine made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Feed the pipe cleaner pieces through the pet balls. Wrap the ends of the pipe cleaners around the card and space them out like this. Finally, stick the card to the tube and your easy tambourine is complete. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? I'm just finishing off making this telescope. There, let's give it a try. <laughs> wow, I can see the sea. Oh, and look at that lovely boat. Oh. I wish I was out there on the sea. I'd make a great ship's captain. Oh yes, it's a sailor's life for me. The fresh air, the smell of the sea, and the sight of the ocean. Wait! Oh! Actually, I think I'm probably better sticking to dry land. <laughs> but I have to say that this has given me a great idea. Let's try something. Try making a brilliant porthole picture out of a paper plate. Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Come on! Two coloured paper plates. Some paint. Some salt. Some modelling clay and a pencil. Some paper, some glue, and wax crayons. Oh! Now, a porthole is a round window on a ship. So we could call this a porthole picture, with a boat floating on the waves. Let's get started. Now, we need two coloured paper plates like this, and we're going to make a hole in one of them. Now, this is a bit tricky, so you might want to ask an adult to help you. Get a ball of modelling clay and a sharp pencil. Put the modelling clay underneath the plate and then very carefully push through the plate into the clay. Let's take out the pencil and remove the clay. And there, you've got a hole to help you cut out your porthole. Let's get cutting, but be careful because scissors are sharp. Ooh. 
Next, draw a picture to go in your porthole. You can choose anything you like, but I'm going to do a boat at sea. Add some extra details with paint. Now let's add some waves for the sea. Now we can colour these waves in with a special watery painty mixture. And we make that by putting a squirt of paint into a bowl and then adding some water to make it thinner. Let's give it a mix. OK, let's get painting. When you've done that and the pitcher is still wet, you need to sprinkle on some salt. Now this will make the sea look really realistic and, um, well, salty. And now we need to leave it all to dry. And look at this. The salt has made the sea look all bumpy and foamy. Now we need to cut out our boat and our waves very, very carefully. Glue these pieces onto the plate, starting by putting the boat in the middle. And now we can glue the waves over the top, like this, and then trim off the extra bits around the edge that we don't need. Finally, glue around the edge of your plate, and then bring in your porthole plate and stick it on top. What a brilliant effect! It's a fantastic porthole picture looking out at a boat at sea. And there are lots of other porthole pictures you can try too. How about this one? A palm tree on a desert island. Or even a lighthouse on a choppy sea. It's up to you. You can make anything. And maybe you'll be so pleased that you'll join me in a I'm so happy I've made a poor hole picture sea jig. <laughs> oh, my trousers. Whoops. <laughs> Just one more on top. There we go. Look, it's the world's first colourful scouring pan tower. Oh, it's taken me ages to build this. Now, I better put it in the doodle drawers. Right, easy does it. Easy does it. There we go. Right, uh, now, open, please. Oh. oh, thank you. Right, there we go. That's it. Right, let's get them all in. That's it. Uh, hopefully, if I give it a push, they'll all squeeze in. <laughs> Well, so much for my tower. <sighs> Hang on. I didn't know that these pads stick to each other. Oh, oh, that's really clever. And it's given me a great idea. Let's make something. A super sticky picture made with colourful kitchen scouring pads. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> A piece of cardboard. Some gloopy PVA glue. Scissors and a paintbrush. And some kitchen scouring pads. Phew! Whoa! Now, to make your very own super sticky picture, like this one here, First, take your piece of cardboard and completely cover it in gloopy glue. Whoa! Now, it's easier to do this if you use a paintbrush. There. Now we can take four dark-coloured scouring pads and put them on top. Now, don't worry if the pads overlap the edge of your card for now. You can always carefully trim them later. 
And when it's dry, you can put your sticky board to one side, because now we need to make a sticky picture to go on our sticky board. You can do anything you like, but I think we should do a space scene. Look at that. Now let's take a different coloured scouring pad, maybe this one, and cut out a rectangle shape, which will be the body of our rocket. Be careful, though, because scissors are sharp. Woo. Now, we also need two smaller rectangles, here and here. These are going to be the rocket's boosters. And we need a half-circle shape that's been cut in half again for our planet. Now we're going to cut out a triangle for the top of the rocket, a small rectangle for the rocket's base, and some circles for the planet's craters. You can choose whatever colour you like, but I think we should use red. Yes. Great! Now let's choose another colour. How about... Blue! Let's cut triangles for the rocket's wings and small circles for the windows. And if your fingers get tired from all that cutting, then give them a little rest and let them do whatever they want. better. Now, with a white or yellow scouring pad, how about we cut out a moon for the sky, some stars, and a thin oval ring around our planet? Now we can arrange our picture. And remember, the great thing about these sticky pads is they don't need any glue. They just stick together. Watch. What a great effect. And the great thing about this sticky board is that all the pieces stick together. Fantastic! And the other good thing about making a sticky picture is that you can rearrange your pieces whenever you want. Or you could even cut new ones. How about a super sticky scouring pad train on a yellow background? And why not try a super sticky lion on a blue background? Aren't they great? Super sticky scouring pad pictures that you can arrange however you like. This fantastic seaside picture looks great, doesn't it? And it's made without using any brushes, just sponges and paint. It's very easy to do and looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You will need some coloured paint, a pen and some sponge strips that have been carefully cut out of kitchen sponge like this. To make your seaside picture, start off by dipping one of the sponge strips into blue paint. Then drag it along the bottom of the paper, like this, so that the paint spreads with the sponge. It's easy. Just dip and drag, and if you run out of paint, just dip it and drag again. This is going to be the sea. Now let's do the same again with another piece of sponge and some green paint. It's a good idea to use a clean bit of sponge every time you use a different colour. This is going to be the harbour wall next to the sea. Now let's do the seaside cliffs with some brown paint. Next, use some nice bright colours for the seaside houses. You can drag your paint downwards to make a house shape like this. And don't forget to add a roof with some brown paint. You can make as many different coloured houses as you want. It's starting to look really effective, isn't it? We can add some more blue paint above the houses for the sky. 
And now, with another piece of sponge, let's add some boats. Just dip your sponge in the paint and drag it round in a curve shape like this. Add brown paint for the boat's mast with the edge of the sponge. You can do as many boats as you want. Now all that's left to do is add some details with a black felt tip pen. Draw doors and windows on your houses. Add some finishing touches to the boats. And add some details to your harbour wall so it really stands out. A sponge seaside picture. And you don't even need a paintbrush to make it. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! I like making pictures out of all sorts of things. So Look at this. I've been sorting out all of my sea creatures. I've got everything here. I've got a whale, a very nice starfish, and a lobster. Ow! You little nipper, you. Well, I can't seem to find my favourite octopus, Ollie, anywhere. Now, where could he be? Eh? <coughs> Ooh. Maybe he's over in the doodle drawers. Oh, I hope not. How am I going to find him in here? Ollie? <coughs> Ollie, is that you? <coughs> well, I don't care if you and your friends are having fun in there. You can't stay in the doodle drawers. <coughs> you need to go somewhere else. <coughs> somewhere fun. <coughs> somewhere colourful. <coughs> somewhere... <coughs> Watery. <laughs> oh, this gives me a good idea, though. Why not make a mini fish tank from a box as a home for your very own sea creatures? Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> a clear plastic box. Brightly coloured scouring pads and sponges. Some scissors and some gloopy PVA glue. And some felt tip pens. Whoa! Now we also need some googly eyes, and you can get those in an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got them. Right, here we go. Here are our googly eyes. There. Now, to make your very own sea in a box, like this one here, you'll first need to find a clear plastic box with a lid like this. Now, all sorts of things come in these plastic boxes, so have a good look round your local supermarket and I'm sure you'll find one. Now, this one looks really good, so let's get started. Let's take off the lid and bring in a brightly coloured scouring pad, because this is going to be the water. Now, let's put our lid on top and then draw around the lid with a felt-tip pen. There! Now we need to cut this shape out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. <laughs> Place this into your plastic box like this to make a watery background. Now we need to make some sand and some seaweed. Now you can make this out of whatever you like but I'm going to use the scouring sponges. We're going to very carefully snip out this middle bit, OK? Let's get the scissors. Snip. If we unravel it, we'll make a sandy seabed. Now we can lay it into our box. There! Brilliant! Now let's make some seaweed. So for that we need ah, one of these green scouring sponges. Very carefully get our scissors and make a snip. Let's cut this end off first. There we go. Now if we pull this apart, it looks like seaweed. 
Very nice. Now, how about a beautiful flower like this red one here? Let's get a red scouring sponge and again, pull it apart. And if we unravel it slightly, it's a beautiful flower. Let's put it in. I think down the bottom here would be good. There. Now it's starting to take shape, but something's missing. Oh, I know, a sea creature. Let's make an octopus. Now for that, we'll need a thin colored sponge, like this green one here. That'll look good. And let's get a felt tip in the same color, a green one. Okay, let's draw a nice big round head and some wiggly legs. And we can also add some extra details with our pen as well. Now we can give our octopus a tongue by bringing in a tongue colored sponge like this pink one here and using a pink felt tip pen to draw it. Then carefully cut these out. Now let's glue them together and add some googly eyes with some gloopy glue. Brilliant! There's our octopus. Let's put him in his nice new home. Fantastic. Now let's put the lid on. And there we go. Fantastic. But you don't just have to give a home to an octopus, it could be a starfish. This is made using a yellow sponge cut into a star shape. Or maybe some exotic fish. This is made using lots of different colours and types of sponge. Let's take a closer look. Why don't you have a go at making your own sea in a box? <laughs> Oh, hello, Sid. <coughs> Whoa! <laughs> it's great in here, and the best thing about it is <coughs> you don't get wet at all. Hey, it's minute make time. Come on! <coughs> It's Minute Make Time, and here's what we're going to make today. A bookworm. The perfect fellow to mark where you are in a book or a favourite page. Now, to make a bookworm, you will need a strip of card, some scissors, an old rubber glove, some cotton wool, a glue stick, some sticky tape, and some googly eyes. <laughs> No, not these googly eyes. The sort of googly eyes that you find in an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. <coughs> I've got them. Right. Here are our googly eyes. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? Not a chance. Well, let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Great! Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock! Right, the first thing we're going to do is get our old rubber glove and some scissors and very carefully cut off two of the fingers like this. There we go. Very careful. Nice. And then just give them a little snip. Right, now let's fill these with cotton wool. Here we go. There's a bit in that finger there. In you go. And then we need a bit in this finger here. There we go. Right, stuff it. I'm going to leave a little bit at each end because that's where we're going to put this, our strip of card. Now, if I bunch it all together there and get a bit of sticky tape, I can stick it down on that side. And then another bit of sticky tape for this side. Here we go. Bunch it together there. Faster! Faster! Stick down. There we go. And if you turn it over, yeah, it's looking good, looking good. Right, now I need some glue on this side here. There we go, where I can put the two googly eyes. There's one, and there's two. There, I've done it! That was close. Phew, that was close. But if you've got more than a minute, you could try some other bookworms. Like this one here with spots. <laughs> or this one with glittery stripes.
Or how about this one with fur? Bookworms made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Cut two fingers off a washing up glove. Stuff them with cotton wool and stick both ends to the piece of card. Finally, stick on the googly eyes to finish your bookworm. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? Look at this old chest. <sighs> I found it up in my attic and it's got lots of good stuff in here for my doodle drawers. Let's have a look. Oh yes, there's some bits of felt here. That's good. What else have we got? Oh, some buttons. Fantastic. And what else? Oh, hang on, what's this? Wow, it looks like an old scroll. Shall I open it? Okay, here we go. <gasps> Look at this. It's a treasure map. And it looks like there's some writing in the corner there. Let's read it. Walk now, ye pirate, across the floor. X marks the spot in the doodle drawer. Wow, I better do what it says. I might find some treasure. <laughs> Well, here we are. Here are the doodle drawers and look, X marks the spot. This must be the place. Right, let's have a look inside. Oh, I can see something shiny. I think it's the treasure. It's, it's, it's some tin foil. Oh, well, let's have a look anyway. There's another clue. Let's read it. To find ye the treasure, just one thing is clear. You'll need all this tin foil for your great idea. Great idea? What great idea? Hang on a minute. I am having a great idea. Let's make something. Make fantastic tin foil treasure that you'll want to keep forever. As well as some tin foil, we'll need some other things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> A paper plate, some shiny wrappers, and some gloopy PVA glue. Phew! Whoa! Now, to make your tin foil treasure like this, you need to take a paper plate and cover it with gloopy glue. And then a big piece of tin foil. Make sure you cover both sides. Then twist a big piece of foil into a long, thin sausage shape like this. Then twist it into a curly shape. There, that's looking good. Now we can use a smaller piece of tin foil and make a ring. You can make as many as you like. Now glue your foil pieces onto your plate. Then to make your treasure look even more precious, get some shiny foil wrappers and fold or scrunch them into little squares or balls. <laughs> now let's place our shiny pieces onto our plate. How about a big one in the middle here? and then some smaller ones around the outside. And how about some bigger ones in the middle of these curly bits? And when you're happy with the position of all your shiny pieces, you can glue them down. And when it's dry, it looks like terrific tinfoil treasure and you can turn anything you like into treasure. How about a gorgeous goblet made out of a plastic beaker? Or even a big treasure box. This one's got an old ice cream tub inside it. 
and you can make as much treasure as you like. Ooh, fantastic! So I did find my treasure after all. <laughs> There's another clue. <gasps> You'll sail the high seas, all bumpy and rocky, but come home to clear up if called back by Toki. Oh, I love cereal, especially when you get a little surprise toy in the box. Hey, <laughs> I wonder if it's in here. <laughs> Let's have a look. Oh, oh, hang on, wait. Wow, a little toy dinosaur. Oh, wait a minute. This and this have given me a really big idea. Let's make something. Try making a dinosaur out of a bowl. It's a Bolosaurus. Let's make it. As well as a plastic bowl, we'll need some other things from the doodle drawers. Come on. An old newspaper. Some sticky tape and some gloopy PVA glue. <laughs> some kitchen roll. And some paints. <laughs> now, we also need some googly eyes, and you can get those from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got them. Here we go. Here are our googly eyes. Now, to make a brilliant bowl dinosaur, like this Bolosaurus here, you need to get yourself a bowl, a bit like this. Now make sure that you ask an adult that it's okay to use it first. This is going to be the dinosaur's body. But of course, we need to make our dinosaur some legs. And for that we need a sheet of newspaper, a bit like this, and we're going to fold it up. And now we're going to roll it into a small kind of dumpy sausage shape. You don't have to be too neat. Just roll it up and then stick it together with some sticky tape so it all stays in position. Here we go. There's one leg. So let's bring our bowl back in and we're going to stick it inside the bowl like this. There, there's one leg. And now we're going to do the same and make three other legs in exactly the same way, but remember to make them the same size so your dinosaur can stand up. <laughs> Tape your legs to the underneath of the bowl in a square like this. Now we need to make the dinosaur's tail. And for that we need another sheet of newspaper. And we're going to roll it up again, like this. There we go. And at one end, I'm going to twist it so it's a bit thinner, and then stick it together with some sticky tape. There we go, there's our tail. So let's bring our bowl back in, and we're going to stick it between two of the legs. There. Now, for the dinosaur's neck, we need, yes, you've guessed it, another sheet of newspaper. And we're going to roll it up in the same way that we rolled up our tail piece. But this time, at one end, we're going to bend it over and then over again to make it a bit thicker because this is going to be the head. Stick it all together with sticky tape and then stick it onto our bowl, but this time, we're going to turn the bowl over so it's standing up and we're going to stick the neck on the front of the bowl between these two front legs here. Make sure you put on lots of sticky tape to hold the neck in place. Let's get a bowl of gloopy glue now and add a drop of water to make it runnier like custard. Let's give it a mix. And now, we're going to add a layer of this and some pieces of ripped up kitchen roll onto our dinosaur. When you've covered the whole body and it's dry, it'll be really solid.
Plus, it'll give you this rough effect like dinosaur skin. Now we're ready to paint it. You can choose whatever colour you like, but this dinosaur is going to be like this one here. It's mainly dark green paint with light green paint on top of it. Let's get painting. And when the paint is dry, you can add on two googly eyes. There we go! Your very own Bolosaurus! He's fantastic! And you can make lots of different bowl dinosaurs! How about a Stegosaurus using cardboard pieces to make its big spikes? Or you could try a Triceratops! Using a bigger bowl and giving it paper horns! Oh, I love dinosaurs! I wish they were still roaming the Earth! <laughs> huh? oh. Hey! Oh, I was only joking! Oh, look! It's a dinosaur! Hide, everyone! Oh, hello! Huh? Hello? Could you tell me the way to the shops, please? Yeah. Oh, yes, they're that way. Thank you! Bye! Bye! <laughs> well, there's something you don't see every day. Hmm. <laughs> Let's make something great out of old rubbish. Look at that. It's a fantastic rubbish pitcher that's actually quite great. Now, for this, you'll need some sticky back plastic, some old sweet wrappers and some bits of old crisp wrappers that have been cut up. Really, you can use bits of anything. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just a minute? No way! Really? Well, let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Start the clock! Let's go! The first thing to do is to peel the backing off your sticky back plastic. Now, you'll find this easier to do if you put sticky tape on the corners like that. Now, let's start making our rubbish design. Just lay down the bits of your wrappers and ripped up crisp packets. Now, you can make any design you want. That's the beauty of this idea. Just put the bits down there. It's rubbish. It's not rubbish. It's looking quite good, actually. Halfway. Halfway already. Oh. There we go. Now, you have to go as quickly as you can. Hurry up. I stick that down and then just pick up these bits here. It's done! Ooh, what a great design! Lucky, lucky, lucky! Thank you! Rubbish art that looks rather great. And why not try making this into a bunch of flowers? Nice! And you could even cover your drawing books with it. Rubbish art that looks great! Why don't you give it a go? And here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. First, peel the backing off some sticky back plastic. You'll find this easier to do if you put sticky tape on the corners like this. Then stick sweet wrappers and bits of ripped up crisp packets all over the sticky backed plastic. Remove the sticky tape and your rubbish picture will look really good. Try making it in a minute. It's minute make time. It's minute make time, and here's what we're going to make today. A surprise spring bug. It's a bouncy <laughs> bug that pops up to say hello. Now, to make one of these, you will need an old plastic pot with a lid, like one of these here. Any shape or size will do. Two different coloured strips of card, a pom-pom, a glue stick, and we'll also need some googly eyes that you can get from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got them. There are our googly eyes. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Well, let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute. Stop the clock! 
Right, let's get our two strips and put them together like that in an L shape. And then get some glue and stick them together. Now we're going to make a paper spring by folding over one way and then the other way and then one way and then the other way all the way along until we've got our spring. Right, I've got to go as quick as I can. Now this can be a bit tricky, so you might want to ask an adult to help you. Faster! I'm going as quick as I can, Toki! There we go. Now if I put a big dollop of glue on the end here, like that, and then we can put our pom-pom on top there. Now let's give him some eyes. There we go, there's one eye there, and then there's another eye. Let's stick him on, there we go. There! Now, if we get our pot and put some glue in there, we can put our surprise bug inside and close the lid! Only just! Phew! That was close. Now let's have a look inside. <laughs> <laughs> Only kidding, I knew you was in there, really. And if you've got more than a minute, you can make some other surprise spring bugs. This one's got three eyes and eyelashes made out of paper. Or you could put two bugs in one box for double the surprise. A surprise spring made in a minute. Give it a go. Here's a reminder of how to do it. Why don't you try making it in a minute? Every time I pick an ice cream up, something silly happens that makes me drop it. But not today! No siree! <laughs> right, here we go, here we go. Ooh. Ooh. Oh no, it's happened again! Oh, yucky! My really bad luck with real ice cream has given me a really great idea! Let's make something! A bowl of brilliant fake ice cream that will never ever melt! Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers! Come on! Some sponges A plastic bowl and a plastic spoon. Some paint and some gloopy PVA glue. A vacuum cleaner. Whoa! Whoa! No! We don't need that! Get back in there! Some colourful cake decorations. And finally, some corrugated card and some scissors. <laughs> oh. Now, to make your very own bowl of fake ice cream, like this one here, take your scissors and trim your sponges into ball shapes. But be careful, because scissors are sharp. Ooh, yeah. Now, this is a bit tricky, so you might want to ask an adult to help you. When you've trimmed your sponges into shape, dab some gloopy glue onto them and stick them into an old plastic bowl. But make sure you've got permission to use it first. There! Now we need to paint our sponges a nice ice cream colour. Now, as I like mint flavoured ice cream, I'm going to use mint green paint. And now for the yummy chocolate sauce. Mix some brown paint with some gloopy glue. <laughs> Now we can pour this over our ice cream. <laughs> Fantastic! And I know what's going to make this look even more delicious. Cake decorations! Let's sprinkle some on. There! 
Very nice. And how about a wafer? For that, we'll need some light brown corrugated card and we'll cut it into a triangle shape with one curved edge like this. There. Now we can pop this into the bowl and leave the whole thing to dry. And now, as a finishing touch, all that's missing is a spoon. Just put a dab of gloopy glue on the back of a plastic spoon. Just a tiny bit, that's enough. And then you can pop it into the bowl and leave it to dry. Fantastic, look at that. It looks just like the real thing. And there are lots of other fake ice creams you can try too. How about a chocolate ice cream with a strawberry sauce that's made by painting the sponge balls brown and dribbling on pink paint? Or how about vanilla ice cream with strawberry sauce and chocolate cake decorations? Fake ice cream that looks so real, it's making me hungry. <laughs> so I'm going to give real ice cream another try. I'm sure I won't drop it this time. There's no one here but me and you. No banana skins on the floor. Nothing can stop me now. Squall! Oh! <laughs> Talking. Let's make a picture out of sweets. Whoa. It's a beautiful merry-go-round. A periscope! Oh, yes, shipmates. I can see land. I can see... Wait a minute. Who's that? Oh, it's you! I was just playing behind the sofa. I'm pretending that this is my submarine and I'm the submarine captain. Yeah, look, I've even got my own periscope. This helps me find things. I'm looking for my lost pencils at the moment. Yeah, maybe you can help me and my submarine find them. OK, let's do it. Right, I'm coming back aboard. Dive, dive, dive! <laughs> Where are they? Well, they're not on the table. No, that's empty. Oh, well, no, they're not on there. Hang on a minute. Zoom in, please. Hooray! We found the pencils. Thanks for your help, everyone. That was great fun. And it's given me a great idea. A super submarine that's also a pencil case. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> a plastic fabric conditioner bottle with a nice wide neck and a lid. A washing ball with a flat bottom. Plastic containers and pots. Some paint, some tissue paper and a black pen and some masking tape and some gloopy PVA glue. Whoa! Now, to make your very own fantastic submarine pencil case, like this one here, you first have to get an adult to help you thoroughly clean and dry out a fabric conditioner bottle and all of the other plastic containers. Now, make sure you've got a plastic pot with a lid like this one here and also a small plastic bottle with a flip-up lid like that. Let's start putting all of our bits together. Let's put the fabric conditioner bottle here. That's going to be the main body of our submarine. And let's put the pot on this end here at the back. There we go. Now let's take the washing ball and put it on the end of that pot. And how about the plastic bottle with the flip-up lid? That can go up here, because that's where our periscope's going to be. And so our pencil case can stand up. Let's put the lid on the bottom there. 
Great! Everything looks in position now, so we can stick it all together with some masking tape. Now, you can put on as much tape as you like to do this, but make sure that you don't put any tape over this open end of the washing ball, because that's where all our pencil sharpeners and rubbers are going to go. Now we can cover it in a layer of gloopy glue and tissue paper. Now you could use strips of yellow tissue paper like this or any colour you like really. Now the more layers of tissue paper you put on, the better it will look. Add as many layers as you want and then leave it to dry. And when it's dry, you can paint on some details. How about some porthole windows and some stripes on the side? Now, cover your plastic lids with a special mixture that's half paint and half gloopy glue. Let's give it a mix. Finally, when your submarine is all nice and dry, you can add some extra details with a black pen. <laughs> Doesn't it look great? Now, all we need to do is pop some pencils into our new submarine pencil case. And I know just where those pencils are. Won't be a tick. I've got them. Now, we can put anything we like in our new pencil case. We could put big things like these pencils in this end. And we could put smaller things like these rubbers in this end. Fantastic! Now I'll never lose them again! <laughs> Now, take a look at this. What a brilliant tinfoil crown picture. It's great fun to do and looks so good you'll be able to frame it. To make it, you will need coloured paper, tinfoil, shiny wrapping paper, a glue stick, a black pen, cotton wool and some plastic gems. Draw a crown shape on tinfoil with a pencil. Then cut it out and stick it onto your coloured paper with glue. Now squash some tin foil and shiny wrapping paper into balls and squares and stick them onto your crown like this. Next, press onto the foil with a pencil to draw swirls and squares. You can even stick on some plastic gems like this. Then glue a line of cotton wool along the bottom edge of the crown. Finally, make dots on the cotton wool with the black pen. And there you have it, a crown fit for a king or queen. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Fantastic! Time. It's Minute Make Time! <laughs> Here's what we're making today. It's a spoon bug. And it's called a spoon bug because it's made with a spoon. Yes, for this you will need the spoon. Look at it. It's a plastic one. Now, you'll also need some cotton buds, a pair of scissors and some air drying clay, which you can get from any arty and crafty shop. I'll be back in a tick. Got it. Here's my air drying clay. Look at that. Right, I'll leave that there for later. Now, do you think it's possible to make this spoon bug in just one minute? You must be joking! I must be joking, you must be joking. I think we can do it. Now, I'm going to have to move very, very quickly. But don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Let's make it in a minute! Start the clock! Let's go! Get a lump of clay and roll it into a ball. That's it. Whoa. Now let's roll it on the table as well. There, that's looking quite good. Now let's get our plastic spoon and start squidging the clay 
into the spoon, like that. There, now is that all stuck in? Let's have a check. Yeah, it's all in there, great. Okay, let's leave that down there. Now let's get our three cotton buds and very, very carefully, with your scissors, cut them in half. There we go, there, great. Now, take those scissors off. There we go, and stick the cotton buds into the clay. There's number three. There, I'm just pushing those cuttings in there, leaving the soft ends out. There we go, I'm done, finished. It's not finished. Yes, I am actually, Toki. This one just needs to dry, and when it's dry, it'll look like this. And you can flip out your spoon bug and turn him over, and there he is, a spoon bug. And when you've got more than a minute, you can paint it any colour you like. Have a look at this lot. There's our ladybird. There's a jungle bug over there. And this one's got extra legs. Ooh, spoon bugs made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Roll a small piece of air drying clay into a ball. Press the clay into your spoon like this. Then cut the cotton buds in half and push the cut ends into the clay. Leave it to dry and you can decorate your spoon bugs however you like. Try making it in a minute. I'm just about to have a look in my doodle drawers. There's lots of fantastic things in here, all great for making art with. Let's have a look. <laughs> Aha, there are pens. There are pencils. There are pears. Pears? No, that's not right. Hang on, let's have another go. There are pens. There are pencils. There are pineapples! Pineapples? That's not right either. Let's have one more try. Right. There are pens. There are pencils. And there are plates. <laughs> plates? Oh no. You can't make anything with a polystyrene plate. Or can you? Hang on to your handlebars. I'm having an idea. Let's try something. Try printing a perfect picture by painting on a polystyrene plate. Let's make it. As well as our polystyrene plate, we'll need some other things from the Doodle Drawers. A pencil and a pair of scissors. Some paint and a small sponge. And a piece of card. Now, to make a plate print like this one here, you will need a polystyrene plate. Now, we need to cut off the rim all the way around the edge. But be careful because scissors are sharp. <laughs> now we can draw a design on the smoothest side of this plate by pressing firmly with a pencil. Let's draw a crocodile. But don't press too hard though, or you'll tear the plastic. Now use a small sponge to dab paint all over the picture. There we go. Next, press the wet side down onto some coloured card and press firmly. Lift it up. And there you have the perfect plate print. What a clever crocodile. And it's so easy to do. There are lots of other designs you could try as well. How about a fish in the sea? A boat on the waves? 
or even a plane. You can print anything with a polystyrene plate. Oh, why does the doorbell always go when I'm doing the washing up? Who could that be? <laughs> boo! Oh, <laughs> it's just a big scary green monster saying boo. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, a big scary green monster saying boo? Mm. <gasps> oh. 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 That was a bit of a surprise. <laughs> but that monster and these rubber gloves have given me a great idea. Let's make something. Make a monster rubber glove hand to surprise your friends. Let's make it. <coughs> we'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <coughs> An old rubber glove in whatever colour you want your monster hand to be. How about green? Some coloured card and some tissue paper. PVA gloopy glue, some cotton wool and a pipe cleaner. An old long sock. An old wooden spoon, some furry material and a black pen. <laughs> now, to make your very own scary rubber glove monster hand, like this one here... <laughs> First of all, you need to get a rubber glove, like this one here, and a wooden spoon, and then put the wooden spoon inside the rubber glove, like this. Now we need to get lots of cotton wool and we're going to stuff the rubber glove full of it, making sure that we get into all of the fingers on the glove too. Once the hand is full of cotton wool, we can keep everything in place by tying a pipe cleaner around the bottom. Now it's time to make some monster coloured fingernails like this. Oh, they're very scary. Now you can make them whatever colour you like, but I think that yellow looks rather good. So let's get some yellow paper or card and start drawing with a black pen. Now we can cut these shapes out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Now let's stick the fingernails onto the glove. We can use gloopy glue for this. There we go, all the fingernails are on, so we could add some really scary monster fur onto the hand as well, in a good monster colour. Now, you can choose whatever colour you like, but I think this brown looks rather good. Cut out a fur piece for the top of the hand and a smaller piece for each finger. We can now stick the fur onto the hand with gloopy glue. It's looking really good, isn't it? But we can also add some extra detail with a black pen to make our monster hand look really wrinkly and scary. Ooh. And how about adding some monster-like green blobs onto the back of the hand like this? <laughs> That's going to make the hand look even scarier. So let's get some green tissue paper and we can just screw it up into a ball like that and then just dunk it in some gloopy glue and then pop it onto our hand. Finally, we need to cut the end off an old sock. Here we go. Now this is going to be the sleeve to hide our hand inside. <laughs> Now let's hide our hand inside and pick up our scary monster-like rubber glove. Oh, <laughs> there, doesn't it look great? 
All you need to do is put your hand inside, roll down your sleeves, and you're ready to surprise your friends. <laughs> and why not try some other hilarious rubber glove hands? How about the hand of a queen? Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's made with cotton wool and sparkly gems. <laughs> Or how about this spooky skeleton hand? <laughs> it's made by painting white bones onto a black rubber glove. <laughs> it's a lovely day for a spot of spring cleaning. <sighs> lovely. I can see the sea. <sighs> Aha! This gives me an idea. A super squashy foam boat that can float. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> some different coloured sponges. A lobster. No, we don't need this. Ow! Don't get snappy. Some scissors. And some white sticky PVA glue. Whoa! Now, to make a foam boat like this one here, first get a large rectangle shaped sponge like this. This is going to be the main part of our boat. Now, take some scissors, but be careful because scissors are sharp. We need to cut two triangle shapes here and here. Now, this is a bit fiddly, so it's probably best to ask an adult to help you. You should be left with a boat shape like this. There. Next, we need three other sponges, and these are great because they're all different colours. Let's put the green one on top, there. Now, with another sponge, carefully cut a small rectangle shape. Let's pop this on top of that green sponge there. And then with our last sponge, we can cut out some details. Cut some little circle shapes out for portholes and a bigger shape for a funnel. Again, if you find this hard, ask an adult to help you. Now you're ready to stick it all together. I've stuck my three big sponges together and put four windows on this side and four windows on the other side and even a funnel on top. Wow! A super squashy foam boat! I wonder if it'll float. Oh, let's see. It does! Let's jump aboard! Oh, great! A life on the ocean wave. Oh, I am feeling a bit seasick, though. Oh, I think we should get back to dry land. Oh, 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 that's better. Now let's see what else you can make with a sponge. Fantastic, look! A sponge tractor. And what a nipper! A sponge crab! Wow! So you see, you can turn a sponge into anything you want. Hey, look at my human! paper cup tower. It's taken me ages to get it this tall, you know. It's great, isn't it? But I have to be very careful because the slightest wrong move and the whole thing could come crashing down. <laughs> yeah, imagine if I had to start all this again. <laughs> now, just one more cup on the top. Here we go. <laughs> oh! oh, no! My paper cup tower! Oh, sorry. Honestly, that bird. I wish I could let him know sometimes that I don't want to be disturbed. Oh, that gives me an idea. 
Let's make something! A brilliant hanging sign for your bedroom door that lets your friends and family know when you don't want to be disturbed. Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers! Come on, everyone! <laughs> An empty shower gel bottle with a handle like this. <laughs> some thick paper or thin card and some tissue paper. Some paint and some gloopy PVA glue. A pencil and a black pen. And some bits of wool. Oh! Now, to make a hanging do not disturb sign like this one here, firstly, you have to make sure that your shower gel bottle is totally clean. Now, you might want to ask an adult to help you with this bit. Then we need to cover the whole thing in a light tissue paper or kitchen roll. So let's put on plenty of gloopy glue. We're going to cover the whole thing, the bottle and the lid, and then leave it to dry. <laughs> then, when it's all dry, you can paint your bottle whatever colour you like. This one's going to be my face, so let's use pink paint. When the paint is dry, we can draw the face details on with a pencil. This face is going to be wide awake. There! Now for the other side, let's draw a face that's fast asleep. There! Now don't forget that you will need two ears and a hairstyle for both sides. So, let's bring in a piece of card and if we fold it in half, we get two of everything we draw. And now we're going to draw two ears starting at the open end of our paper. And we can also draw a hairstyle. There! Now we can cut these shapes out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. Ooh. <laughs> so now we've got two pairs of ears and two hairstyles, and we're ready to glue them onto our bottle. So let's stick our hairstyle here on top of the head. And we can stick our ears here, either side of the eyes. When you've done that, turn your bottle over and do exactly the same on the other side. And when it's nice and dry, you can paint it. How about pink for the ears and the rosy cheeks and white for the teeth and the eyes? And for the hair, I think brown would be nice, like mine. Now add some finishing touches with a black pen. And you can even stick on some extra bits of wool for hair. Keep going until you're happy with your hair and don't forget to turn it over and do the same on the other side. Wow! What a handsome chap! You know, it's like looking in a mirror. <laughs> You can hang this on your bedroom door this way if you're awake and you don't mind visitors. Or hang it this way if you're asleep and you don't want to be disturbed. You can try any design you want. How about a yellow and brown lion? Give it a really wild hairstyle with lots of wool for the lion's mane. Or a silly green monster <laughs> with green tissue paper and wool for its hair. So there you go. The perfect way of letting everybody know that you want a bit of peace and quiet. I'm just putting all of my sponges away. Ooh. Now, I hope there's enough room over here in my doodle drawers. Right, come on then, open up. Oh, that's good, right. Oh, oh well, that's nice, isn't it? Uh, what about you, Mr Lizard? Open up. That's good. Put yeah, very funny doodle drawers. Come on, open wide. That's better. Now, no more funny business, all right? Here we go. Get in there. That's it. Ooh. 
Here we go. Right. There we go. Much better. <coughs> oh, pardon you, Doodle Drawers. Yeah, that's not a good sign. I must have filled you up. <laughs> hey, what's that? Huh? <coughs> oh, well, it doesn't matter. You can make some great things out of sponges. This gives me a great idea. Try using sponges to make a brilliant sponge picture. Let's make it. As well as sponges, we'll need some other things from the bursting doodle drawers. <laughs> some cardboard. <laughs> some scissors. <laughs> some chalks. And some gloopy PVA glue. Phew! Whoa! Now, to make your very own sponge building picture, like this one here, take your cardboard and colour it in with yellow and red chalks to make a sky. It's a good idea if you start with a big red sun in one of the corners. And then do the rest of the sky. <laughs> that looks great! Make sure you leave a gap at the bottom. And you'll see why now, because it's time to start arranging a sponge building. Let's start with a big rectangle sponge, and let's put it there at the bottom of our picture. Now let's get two smaller rectangle sponges and put those either side of the big one. And now, oh yes, how about another different coloured rectangle sponge on top of the big one to make a door? Now we need to make roofs for our buildings, and for that we could use two rounded sponges like this. Now it's a good idea if these sponges are different colours. Now we're going to cut the top off this one, and the top and the bottom off this other one. Now remember that scissors are sharp, so be careful and ask an adult to help you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Now we've got three roof shapes. Put the two matching roofs either side of the big sponge and the bigger roof right in the middle on top of the big sponge. There. Now get another rectangle sponge in a different colour and very carefully cut it into two thin strips. Now place these pieces at the bottom of your smaller buildings here. Now all that's missing are the windows and the doors. Now you need to cut out a door shape like this with a pointy roof. And how about three small square window shapes like that? Now it looks good if the windows and the doors are a different colour. Now carefully cut these out and again you could ask an adult to help you. Right, let's put these in place. Put that one there. Fantastic! And when you're happy with all your sponge pieces, you can glue them down onto the cardboard. And when it's dry, you're all finished! But you could try all sorts of other buildings. How about a castle? It's got sponge towers and turrets or even a really big city picture using lots and lots of sponges. Aren't sponges brilliant? You can never have too many of them. No. Oh, oh. 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 Or maybe you can. Must be in here some... Ah, ha, ha, ha. Here it is, my crown. Look at that. Now, have you ever wondered what it would be like to be a king or a queen? <laughs> I have. If I was a king, I'd have a crown and some kingly robes. Ooh, and I'd have a fantastic throne. <laughs> oh, and I'd have all the adoring people of Makerland. Hello, adoring people of Makerland. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'd have everything to make me into a brilliant king. <laughs>
But wait a minute, I've forgotten something. Every king and queen needs a castle. And where am I going to get a castle from? Hey, a castle, a castle. Uh, ooh, a castle. That gives me a great idea. Let's make something. Try making a castle keeper to protect all of your special things. Let's make it. I better get changed first. We need to get some things from the doodle drawers. An empty tea bag box. Four kitchen roll tubes. An empty plastic food tray. Aha! Some paint. Some gloopy PVA glue, a pair of scissors, and a black pen. Whoa! Now, to make your very own castle keeper, like this one here, which is very useful for keeping all of your special bits and pieces in, you need to start off with a plastic food tray. Now, you need to get an adult to help you find one of these and thoroughly clean it out. Then, turn it upside down like this, because this is going to be the hill that the castle sits on top of. Then get your tea bag box and sit it on top and make sure that the front flap opens like this. Now we're going to get our four kitchen roll tubes and place them in each corner. That's here. Now, everything looks in the right position. I can glue everything in place. When it's dry, you can paint the castle. Now, grey looks really, really good. And you can even paint some dark grey rectangles to look like big stone bricks. Now, don't forget to paint the hill. This hill is going to be grassy green and will need a special mixture that's half gloopy glue and half paint. Let's give it a mix. There. Now, this will help our special painty mixture really stick onto the plastic tray. Now, to make the top of the turrets, that's these bits here, we need to cut six snips at the top of each of the kitchen roll tubes. Now, be careful because scissors are sharp. Oh, yes. Let's start with this tube here. There's one. There, six snips. Let's put the scissors down. And now we're going to bend inside one of these flaps. Bend one down like that and then leave the next one standing up and push the next one down. Leave the next one up and then push that one down. And that gives us our turrets. Now let's do the same on all of the other kitchen roll tubes. Next, we can add some extra details with a black pen. Add a door, some windows and brick details. You can even add some light and dark green paint to look like moss. But it's up to you. You can add as much detail or as little as you like. <laughs> wow, it's your very own castle keeper. <laughs> there it is. So let's open it up and you can keep whatever you like inside. <laughs> like all your arty bits and bobs. Okay. Perfect, very useful. And you can even try to make some other types of castles as well. How about making a fairy tale castle using two boxes and painting it pink and purple? Or even, ooh, a really big castle with three boxes and lots of short tubes. Oh, I really like this one. Let's take a closer look. 
Ho-ho! Now this really is a castle fit for a king. <laughs> Why don't you try making your very own castle keeper to keep all your precious things in? Wow! It's Minute Make time! Come on. Hey! Here's what we're going to make today. A spongy card. Very nice. And to make it, you will need a rectangle shaped piece of card, some patterned paper, some pieces of colored kitchen sponge, some glue, and a pair of scissors. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way. Oh, listen to that, everyone. Do you think I can do it? Great. Well, I'm going to have to move very quickly, but don't worry. I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock. Here we go. Let's get the red piece of rectangular shape card, fold it in half like that, and then get the pattern piece of paper. And I'm going to very carefully with my scissors, cut it into a smaller rectangle. Be careful. I'm being careful, Toki, don't worry. I'm going to glue that on to the card. There we go. With a glue stick. There, yeah, that's looking good. And now, get that piece of kitchen sponge and cut another rectangle shape with my scissors. Here we go. And I'm going to glue that on as well. There, yeah, that's looking really good. Now I'm going to take this yellow piece of sponge and cut out a star shape. Oh, Here we go, oh, round and round. There's that bit there. Oh, I'm running out of time, Toki. Do you think I'll do it? What a chance! It's there. Now once I've cut this out, I just need to glue it on. So let's put some glue there in the middle, stick it on, and I've done it! Only just! Yes, that was close! And if you've got more than a minute, you can make all sorts of spongy cards. How about making a spongy house with a window, chimney and a door? Or this perfect birthday card with spongy birthday balloons. Spongy cards made in a minute. Why don't you try and make one? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Fold the card in half. Cut some patterned paper and glue it onto the card. Cut a rectangle shape out of kitchen sponge and stick that on. Then cut a star shape out of different coloured kitchen sponge and glue that on as well to finish your spongy card. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? Now, take a look at this. This road picture is fun to do and looks so good you'll be able to frame it. You will need a piece of card, a ruler, a small and large plastic plate, some paints, paint brushes, a pencil and a black pen. To make your road picture, draw round a small plate with a pencil to make a curved line. Do this again with a larger plate just above. This is our road. Next, draw houses on top of the road. Use a ruler to make straight lines. Paint the grass green and the road grey. And then paint the houses and roofs lots of different colours. You can even paint some clouds in the sky. Outline your picture with a black pen and add doors and windows to the houses. Paint white lines along the middle of the road to finish your picture. Isn't it a bright and colourful road? What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Doesn't that look fantastic? I like making pictures out of all sorts of things. Hey, it's Minute Make time. Come on. And here's what we're going to make today. A spoon alien. It's out of this world. <clears throat> Actually, it's made out of a plastic spoon. <laughs> and to make it, you will need some green stickers, a green plastic spoon, a green pipe cleaner, a black pen, a glue stick, and we'll also need some googly eyes and some air drying clay, which you can get from an art and craft shop. I'll be back before you can say, oh, he's gone to the shop again. <coughs> 
I've got them here are my googly eyes and I've got some air drying clay and it's been rolled into two small balls like that and a slightly larger sausage shape. There we go. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Oh, well, thank you, Toki. I think I can do it, although I will have to be very quick. Don't worry, though. I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Great! Let's make it in a minute! Right, get the green plastic spoon and the googly eyes, and we're going to glue them on to the back of the spoon like this. There's one. There's one googly eye. Let's get the other one. There we go. Right, two googly eyes. Now let's get a pen and draw a nose like that and a mouth. Now let's give him ears with the stickers. There's one alien ear. Let's put another alien ear in. Halfway there. Halfway already. There we go, he's looking good. Now we're gonna get the green pipe cleaner and wrap it around the spoon to give him arms. There's one arm. There's another arm like that. And now let's put these balls of clay onto the ends. These are going to be the hands. There we go, there's one. And there's the other one. And now if we get this sausage of clay and squeeze it into feet, we can stick in a spoon alien. I did it! Only just. <laughs> yes, that was quite close actually, but if you've got more than a minute, you can wait for the clay to dry and then paint your alien a nice alien colour, like green. In fact, you can make a whole family of aliens. How about a silver alien made with a plastic silver spoon and a glittery pipe cleaner? Or even a tiny alien made by carefully cutting a plastic spoon in half. Spoon aliens made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Stick two googly eyes to the back of your spoon, draw on a nose and a mouth, add stickers for ears and wrap a pipe cleaner around the spoon to make arms. Then press two small lumps of clay to the ends of the pipe cleaner for hands. And finally, stand the spoon up in a lump of clay and you've made your spoon alien. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? <laughs> Look at this great picture of a house. It's made by drawing into paint. It sounds difficult, but it isn't. And it looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You'll need some coloured paint, some paper, some glue and scissors, and some things to draw into paint with. All sorts of things work, really. Take a piece of paper and paint on a really thick coat of paint. Let's start with purple. Now, with the edge of a paintbrush, you can make this curvy pattern. Look, it's really easy. And how about some orange paint? With the edge of a ruler, you can make this great pattern. And with the end of a pencil, you can make swirly patterns in blue paint. With the edge of this plastic knife, you can make crisscross patterns in yellow paint. And with the prongs of a plastic fork, you can do wiggly patterns in green paint. Look at all these great patterns you can make. And if you want to, why not cut them into shapes to make a picture? It's a house! Stick down your shapes and your picture's finished. It's really easy. Why don't you try it? What a great way of making a really clever picture. Now all that's left to do is... Frame it! Amazing! This treasure map is great. It looks really old, doesn't it? And guess what? You can get that effect by using a tea bag. It's really easy to do, but looks so good, you'll want to frame it. You'll need some white paper, some wax crayons, and a tea bag. Start off by drawing a really simple map, and then add some details. I've added a palm tree, 
a treasure chest, and of course, where X marks the spot. And don't forget, a map's no good to a pirate unless it has a compass! <laughs> Sorry. Then take your wax crayons and colour in the picture. It's looking good already! Now for the fun bit. Take a cold, wet tea bag and rub it over your picture. Next, scrunch your picture into a ball. But don't worry, you're not going to ruin it. Unscrunch it again and let it dry. It's the crumples in the paper that will make your map look really old. What a great idea! Your very own ancient-looking treasure map. <laughs> what a great way of making a really clever picture. Now all that's left to do is... Frame it! I love making pictures out of all sorts of things. So, watch this. Hello, Mr Plate. Hello there. How are you feeling today? A bit flat. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, can you think of anything to make using me? Do you know, Mr Plate? I think I can. You've just given me a great idea. Let's make something. Oh, yeah. A magnificent paper plate puppet dragon. Wow! Let's make it! Yes, let's. We'll need some things from... The Doodle Doors. Absolutely. <laughs> some sticky stuff. <laughs> some coloured paper. <laughs> and three paper plates. Coloured ones like these work really well. Now, if you haven't got any coloured plates and you've only got white ones like this, don't worry, you can paint two green and one red. Now, to make your paper plate dragon like this one here, first take a red plate and fold it in half to make a mouth. There we go, over it goes. Fold it down there. Now take a green plate and fold that in half too. Like that. And then stick these two plates together at the edges. Here and here. Stick these together and then leave them to dry. Now get some scissors and cut the other green plate in half. But be careful because scissors are sharp. Ooh. Ooh. Next, stick one half of the green plate to the bottom of the red plate just by gluing the edges. Here. When it's dry, make sure you can still fit your hand inside your dragon puppet. There, perfect. Now let's make some dragon ears and for that we need the other half of our green plate. Let's take some scissors and very carefully cut two pointy shapes. Now these need to be really pointy. Like that. There, two ears. Let's stick them onto our dragon with sticky tape. There's one. And there's two. Now let's get our paper and draw two eyes and two teeth. Then take some pink or red paper and draw a long pointy tongue and two nostrils. And then cut all of your bits out very carefully. Yeah. 
Now we've got all our bits, we need to stick them on. And last but not least, because it's a dragon, he needs his teeth. A little bit of sticking. And then if we put it on, a little bit of bending. There, there's one tooth. And now here comes tooth number two. Stick. And bend. There, perfect. Hello, Mr. Dragon. Why, hello, Mr. Beaker. You're looking very fine today. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Why don't you try making your own paper plate dragon? It'll fire you up. I'm just finishing off this picture of a dog. Here we go. There, all done. What do you think? It's not bad, is it? But it needs some extra magic. I just love it when art comes alive and leaps out off the page. <laughs> oh no, my dog's leapt right off the page. I think he might have been barking mad. But I tell you what, he's given me a great idea. Let's try something. Try making a paper plate picture using clever folding to make your drawings really stand out. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Come on. <laughs> Some coloured card and a pen. A paper plate. A white sticker and a glue stick. And a pair of scissors. Whoa! Now, to make a plate picture like this one here with a super sea monster, you need to get yourself a coloured paper plate. Now, you can choose whatever colour you like, but I think this red one will look rather nice. Now, get a blue piece of paper or card and draw a round puddle shape like this. Now, this is going to be the C. Now, cut this shape out very carefully, but be careful because scissors are sharp. Ooh, ooh. Now, stick your C to your plate with glue, like this. <laughs> now, to make the hedge at the back here, take a piece of green paper or card and draw a wobbly cloud-like shape, like this. Now, very carefully, cut this shape out. Now we're going to turn this shape over and fold up the bottom edge like this. This makes a flap. And if we glue along this flap, we can stick our hedge to the plate. Now for the sea monster. For this, we need some monster-coloured card. And you can choose whatever colour you like, but I think we should use yellow right now. Let's start drawing all our monster body parts. Now, remember to start your drawing at the bottom edge of your paper or card, because we're going to be doing some more folding later. Right, let's draw a nice big head shape. Now, for the body, let's draw a half-circle shape with another smaller half-circle inside it. And, of course, a tail shape. There. And when you're happy with all your monster body parts, carefully cut them out. And when you've cut out all your monster parts, why not give it some extra detail with a pen? You could do stripes, spots or whatever you like, really. And don't forget to give your monster an eye with a white sticker and a black dot. And why not add a smile? There we go. And when you're happy with all your monster parts, turn them over and once again fold up the bottom edge to make flaps. And when you've folded all your pieces and made all of your flaps, glue your monster into place. And when it's finished, it looks like this. 
Isn't it fantastic? And you could try some other standout pictures too. How about a car? It's made by cutting out a house, a bush and a car. Or maybe a ship at sea. It's made by drawing a boat, some waves and a sun behind them. Paper plate pictures, a real monster of an idea. Why, thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> hey? Gloopy PBA glue, paintbrushes, scissors, a pen, white paint, crayons, a pencil, coloured paper and some stickers. First, draw some pointy iceberg shapes on blue paper with a white crayon. Now fill in the icebergs with gloopy glue. Place some crumpled kitchen roll over the top. Add more glue on top of that and leave it to dry. Now draw some different sized penguin shapes with a white pencil on some black paper. Cut the penguins out and stick on torn out bits of white paper for the penguins' tummies. Add some orange paper triangles for beaks and white stickers for eyes. Use a black pen to make the pupils. Then stick the penguins onto the icebergs. Finally, add some snow with dots of white paint as a finishing touch. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Fantastic! But it looks very cold. Ho-ho! It's Minute Make Time! <laughs> Here's what we're going to make today. It's a great game that looks like an ice cream cone. Let's give it a go. The idea being that you catch the ice cream in the cone. <laughs> and now to make this, you will need a pair of scissors, a brush, some gloopy PVA glue, some sticky tape, a sponge ball, a circle and a square of tissue paper and half a circle shape of paper or card. Oh, and not forgetting a little bit of wool. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Oh, well, I think I can do it, Toki. I will have to be very quick, though. But don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute! Let's get our half circle of brown paper or card and make it into a cone shape like that. I'm going to stick it with some sticky tape. Yeah, that's in position. There's the cone. Now let's make the ice cream. That's the sponge ball, but we also need the circle of tissue paper. I'm just going to trim around the edges here to make it into a droopy, drippy looking sauce. There we go. Be careful! Round and round. I'm being careful, Toki. Don't you worry. There we go. Let's get some gloopy glue on our ball now. There we go, on the top there. Put plenty on. And then stick our sauce on the top. There we go. Then let's scrunch up the red piece of tissue paper. That's going to be a cherry on the top. There we go, there's the cherry. And then let's get the wool. Stick that inside the cone, like that. Stick the wool to the ball and then you're ready to play! <laughs> that was close! <laughs> yes, that was close, but it makes a game that looks good enough to eat! Can I eat it? No, you can't, Toki. This isn't for eating, it's for playing with. So let's have a game. Here we go! <laughs> oh, I did it! And if you've got more than a minute, you could try some other ideas. Ooh, how about a mint ice cream with painted chocolate drops and a pom-pom chocolate on top? Ooh, or you could even make it into a flower by adding some paper petals around the cone. Fantastic games made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Roll half a circle of brown paper or card into a cone shape and stick it together. Trim the pink tissue paper circle into a wobbly sauce shape and then glue it onto the sponge ball. Scrunch up the red tissue paper and glue it on top for the cherry. Tape one end of the wall to the cone and the other to the sponge ball and your ice cream cone game is finished!
Why don't you try and make it in a minute? <laughs> Have a look at my teeny tiny car here. It's brilliant. And if you think that's good, take a look at this. <laughs> here he is. It's my mini Mr Maker. Let's make it! <laughs> oh, I love playing with teeny tiny toys. Which gives me a great idea. Let's make something. Make yourself a marvellous miniature garden. It's not big, but it's very clever. Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. A green paper plate and some pipe cleaners. A pencil, some modelling clay and some coloured cards. Lollipop sticks and twigs. Sticky tape, glue and red stickers. Some flower-shaped buttons and a toy duck. Really? Great! Whoa! Now, to make a tiny garden like this one here, which has a little path, a pond with a duck swimming in it, a flower bed, a fence and some lovely trees. So let's start off by getting a blue piece of card like this and we're going to draw a squiggly shape with a pencil for our pond. There we go, that looks good. Now we're going to get a green piece of card and we're going to draw two cloud shapes. Now these are going to be the top of our trees. Great! Now we can cut these shapes out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. <laughs> now glue the blue squiggly ponds in the middle of the plate. Now we need to get some grey modelling clay and we're going to roll a few tiny balls like this. Now these balls are going to help us make a tiny path. Just gently squeeze them onto the plate like this. Lovely. Now let's get some brown modelling clay and we need to roll a sort of long sausage shape and we're going to mould and squidge it to the back of the plate to make a flower bed. Then carefully snap three of your lolly sticks in half. Now, you might want to ask an adult to help you with this bit, as it's a bit tricky. Now, bring in two whole lolly sticks, like this, and lay them down. And then start to glue all of the pieces of lolly stick across to make a fence. When the fence is dry, carefully push it into the back of your flower bed. Here we go. Lovely. Now, let's take the two curvy tree shapes that we cut out earlier and we're going to stick on two twigs to the back. A little twig for the little one and a large twig for the large tree. And now we have two trees. They look really good, but we can make them look even better by adding some red stickers for apples. There we go. Two lovely apple trees. Let's stick them in to our garden. I think I'll put the big tree at the back here, like that. And then the smaller one just in front. Fantastic! Well, our garden is starting to take shape, but now we need to plant some flowers in our flower bed. Now, first of all, we need to get some green pipe cleaners like this and just very carefully snip them into small pieces. Now you've got your pieces of pipe cleaner, you need to find yourself a flower-shaped button like this. If you turn it over, there's a little loop in the back in which you can push the pipe cleaner piece through and just fold it over to make a little tiny flower. 
Now, don't worry if you haven't got any flower-shaped buttons. You can always draw and cut out a flower shape on some coloured card, make a little hole in the middle, and then push your piece of pipe cleaner through like this. And when you've got your flowers, bring back your garden and start planting your flowers in the flower bed. <laughs> wow, isn't that amazing? Why not float something on the pond, like a teeny tiny boat or a little toy duck? Oh, look at it, a wonderful, terrific, tiny garden. And you can make any type of tiny world that you like. How about this tiny jungle? It's got lots of card leaves and pipe cleaner trees with a toy tiger. Or you could even try making another tiny garden on a bigger tray. And instead of a fence, it's got a lolly stick bench. Here's an idea you can try to make this amazing picture of a multicoloured wizard in the night sky. It's easy to do, but looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You'll need black paint, a plastic knife, some wax crayons and some washing up liquid. First of all, colour in some white paper with crayons like this. Put different colours anywhere you want. It's great fun. Just make sure the whole page is covered in lots and lots of lovely colours. There we go, all done. Now mix some black paint with a few squirts of washing up liquid. Not too much though, you don't want bubbly paint, just enough to make the paint a bit more sticky and gloopy than normal. Then cover your crayon picture with paint. Don't worry, you're not going to spoil it. It's not gone forever. Just wait and see. Once it's nice and dry, it's time for the clever bit. Did you wonder what the plastic knife was for? It's great for scraping into paint. If you haven't got one, don't worry. Just use the end of a paintbrush or an old key. Watch this. It's a multicoloured wizard. Let's put him in the night sky. Why don't you have a go? It's such a clever idea and you can draw anything you like. What a great way of making a really clever picture. Now all that's left to do is frame it. I love making pictures out of all sorts of things. Now take a look at this. This seaside picture is made from old things that you can find in your kitchen. It's fun to do and looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You'll need some thick card, glue, scissors, kitchen roll, kitchen scourers, a dishcloth, blue rubber gloves and a duster. First, glue a dishcloth to the top half of a piece of card like this. Then glue a duster to the bottom half. Carefully cut off the extra material around the edges and glue on the rubber gloves to make the C. Tear small pieces of kitchen roll. These are going to be the waves. Glue them onto your rubber gloves to make your C look frothy. Now carefully cut shapes from scouring pads to make a sun, a boat, and a bucket and spade. Then stick everything down with gloopy glue. It's a wonderful seaside scene. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Isn't that a great idea? 